So right now we're facing this crisis. I yeah. mean, there's been more bloodshed in the 20th century mm -hmm. than any other century. Mm -hmm. And in the 21st century, the abortion rate today, we're facing 2,500 children in America alone killed every single day. So the leading cause of death, period, is abortion. Mm -hmm. Kills more people than car accidents, cancer, certainly than COVID even during the pandemic. And so, you know, we're Christians in this land, you know, yeah. and we're trying uh, to share the truth and share love. Yeah. But there is literally our own brothers and sisters who are being led away to be killed in facilities set up sometimes in the same street as our churches, mm. where they're being torn apart into pieces, dismembered children, you know, through all nine months of pregnancy, it's legal here in mm. California mm. and in states across the country. So this is, there's nothing I can even, you know, I've studied social reform movements and human rights abuses, but we are so desensitized yes. to the extreme bloodshed of our most yeah. vulnerable members of society. Yeah. What do we do? What is, what, what is our response? I think one of the biggest crisis, crises in the church is this fear of speaking directly to matters. Okay, so I started ministry in the 90s. And, you know, in the 90s, the morality in the U.S., obviously it's never been biblical, but it was a lot closer. So you could preach openly about things and be accepted by a large number of people. That's no longer true. Um, certain topics like this, you bring it up, and you'll immediately be canceled by a large swath of people. No matter how sensitive you are, they're just against it. And so for that reason, you have leaders that are like, well, I just won't address that issue because it's too divisive. And I want people to know God. And if I talk about that, then they'll reject me. And, and I... And so it, it kind of baffles my mind. Yeah. Because you look at the writings of St. Paul, yeah, and he's oh. like calling out if this oh. church is not paying attention on gluttony or sexuality issues. Yeah. He just calls them out. He says, you have forgotten the oh. teaching, da, da, da. And he like glaze in on yeah. them, right? And I just look at like the today, the abortion rate yeah. is the same yeah. among those who identify as Christian. Yeah. Now, they're not necessarily going to church every Sunday or mass every Sunday if they're Catholic, mm -hmm. but who identify as Christian mm -hmm. or Catholic as it is among people who don't according to surveys of people who've had abortions. And, you know, I was raised in a beautiful evangelical church. I basically never heard abortion talked about. Mm -hmm. And I went to my youth pastor when I had a realization of what abortion was, and I said, we've got to talk about this, the abortion. Is it? it took a year to persuade him. And finally, wow. you know, we got through. We were able to talk about it mm -hmm. in, the, in the youth group. But it just, <laughs> why? Why when there's lives at risk in our pews sometimes? Well, I think right now... I'm not saying it's right, but pastors are just fighting to keep anyone around. Um, people are dividing over everything. Mm. And so I really feel for ministers today because it's like, well, are you, you know, who did you vote for? Oh, you vote for that guy. OK, we're leaving. You know, are you wearing a mask? I'm leaving. Did you get vaccinated? I'm leaving. Or you did go to that BLM rally. OK, no, I'm leaving. Everything is just. People are leaving for all sorts of reasons. So I think a lot of them are shell-shocked in the thought of, well, why don't I just talk about abortion this week? <laughs> you know. Well, it's like pick your battles. Exactly. I'm not saying as a pastor you got to come out there on every political issue. No, no, and there absolutely. are two sides on a lot of political issues totally. that you can reasonably make yes, even yes, as a yes. Christian. Yeah. But on an issue about whether or not it should be mm -hmm. okay, whether societally or legally, to kill a child in the womb. Yeah, yeah. Wouldn't, I mean, don't you think that's kind of baseline? It is. I, I personally don't know of leaders who actually believe that it's okay. Um, Meaning you think... Christian leaders. You think most Christian leaders think abortion's wrong, but that isn't... But they won't talk about it. Do you think they really see abortion for what it is? Like, like let's just put it this way. Okay, if yeah, instead yeah, yeah. of it being a pre-born child that's taken into, you know, Planned Parenthood and abortion clinics, it was a one, it was an 18-month-old. Yeah. If 18-month-olds were being taken in yes. to centers yes. across San Francisco, San yeah, Jose, yeah. Los Angeles, wherever, yeah. and killed 2,500 a day legally, yeah. 
right now people would be like i'm against that but I who knows so. where well, yeah. yeah what but my point is yeah. who knows where the world's going to where pretty soon we could be desensitized to that because it's and silly that, right now, right? Right, but that's it's, where if you don't speak against the child being killed in the womb, and it should be enough to speak against them. Yeah, you're right. We're gonna yeah. get desensitized. So eighteen months is okay, but what about nine months? Or about three months? You know, and then it's like okay, right up until conception, you know, or to you know the delivery. Like it doesn't make sense wherever you draw that line. It's just it's life. But the longer we think we can play this game of sticking one step ahead of the world, as long as, well, at least I believe that, you know, in the last three months, that's real life. I'm, a, I'm ahead of a lot of people. And I think sometimes as Christians, you almost feel like if I'm a little bit. A little more moral yeah, than everybody yes, else. Yes, yes. I'm good. Exactly. Which is really dangerous. Yeah, rather than. Either I heard this right illustration of like. Here's the church, you know, here's the Bible, here's the world. And as the world moves away from the Bible, the Christian is kind of in the middle following the world, feeling, well, I'm still closer to the Bible than the world is. And but the world's going further and further. And we're 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 running from this book. We're following, but justifying it, saying, Well, I'm not like them. Yeah, but you're way over here already. Mm -hmm. You know, you you we gravitate away from this book. Well, I think the the Catholics, you know, there's a, yeah. sometimes conversations about it at live action amongst different folks. But I know in friends that I've had, I say, well, if it's just a book, yeah, you know, and there's no defined authority wow. that helps to teach that book, uh -huh. then it's mm. no wonder you could, because a book, you walk away, you walk towards it. It's the living word of God, but it's living in that there's an authority given to us to help us determine the complexities of each era. Mm -hmm. Because each era has its lies and complexities. Yeah. And so I think that's part of the, it's like the the authority question of, yes. you know, and that's why, thanks be to God, you know, the Catholic Church has not changed its teaching. Yeah, yeah. On, on sex, contraception, yes, you know, yes, gender yes. identity, abortion. I have some people say, well, the Catholic Church is going to eventually, yeah, you know, change yeah, its yeah. teaching. I was like, it hasn't for 2,000 years. Yeah, yeah. It's not going to. Yes. And I, I wrestle with that. That's why I wrestle with my evangelical roots, because I'm going, gosh, it really feels like every pastor is his own pope. And however he studies and whatever conclusion he comes to, he's free to teach his whole congregation that. And there is a safety in saying, look, here's the church tradition. Here's what they've always taught. And that's why even the elders at our church, when we come to something that's controversial, we study church history and go, hey, what did the early church fathers? Because mm -hmm. even us as a group in the 21st century, I don't know if I completely trust us to come up with the right thing. Let's go back. Let's go way back and see what they said and why. And that's important. Mm -hmm.